Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Wanted to do a quick meteorological discussion on the cold core tornado event across eastern Iowa today. We just had a pretty photogenic supercell and tornado occur near Williamsburg to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Here's a picture from Joey Marino. Beautiful shot of the supercell structure there. You can see the rear flank downdraft, the clear slot coming back in there with a nice kind of bowl-shaped tornado there. Here's a close-in view of that from Colby Martin. Just a really photogenic tornado on a day that was not expected to be uh, very significant at all. There had been some, uh, you know, talk about a potential cold core event up there today, but it looked like the moisture uh, and some of the ingredients that uh, usually we see in cold core tornado events may not quite come together for a, a significant cold core event, but they actually did end up coming together and we got a nice photogenic tornado out of it. So it's going to be a quick overview of the event, uh, probably not a full, full discussion as we usually do. Try, we'll try not to draw this one out. Uh, pretty simple event, classic cold core event, and let's go ahead and dive in. So started the day off without a severe thunderstorm risk up in this portion of the Midwest, but the uh, midday outlook put in a, a marginal risk with a 2% tornado threat up there in eastern Iowa to northwest Illinois with a large hail threat as well. So there was some semblance of uh, some ingredients coming together in that area uh, over the last several hours leading up to the event that uh, it prompted the reissuance of a marginal severe risk for that area. And this, again, event was not expected to be uh, very significant at all. This is the HREF, so the high-resolution ensemble uh, members here. So this takes into, into account all of the high-resolution guidance, the convective allowing models, uh, et cetera, and gives us an ensemble or kind of average view of what they're seeing. And this was the 0Z HREF uh, set from last night. So 0Z on the 16th, so last night at 6 p.m., so this was the surface temperature field that was expected at 19Z right here. So these yellow colors are 55 degree surface temperatures and above. These kind of uh, greenish sort of yellow colors here uh, are 50 and above. And you can see those 50s extend up into Iowa with just a, a barely, a, a very small uh, little peak there of the 55 plus temperatures up into far southeast Iowa. And that actually wasn't the case today. If we go to our surface data about 19Z here, you can see that we have these 57 degree, uh, 55, you know, 54 to 57 degree temperatures all the way up well into kind of east central Iowa here. So there was a nice little nose there of, of some stronger uh, surface heating. And we'll take a look at the satellite in a second why that occurred. So this was kind of being underdone, the overall sort of surface temperatures, and, and even more so the surface dew points. If we go to the ensemble mean for surface dew points here, if we go forward in time, you can see that those 40s, those 45 plus dew points are this kind of green shaded area right here, 50s dew points, this darker green right in here. And you can see that the 50s, this is 19Z, the 50s aren't even close to the Iowa-Missouri border. They're really relegated down here to eastern Missouri with just 45 to 50 dew points up here into southeast Iowa. And that actually was not the case as well. We go back to our surface data here. And you can see those 50s dew points kind of pooling right there in southeast Iowa. So the 50s dew points, perhaps pooling a little bit along the warm front. You can see the wind shift kind of right in there along the warm front. Perhaps that was the case. But we did have upper 40s into low 50s dew points with surface temperatures into the mid to upper 50s, which you know at first glance might not seem like a typical tornado event. But these cold core events don't really need you know really juicy air, you know 80s surface temperatures with 70s dew points to get the job done because of the strong thermodynamics in the atmosphere. So let's back out here. Let's take a look at some upper air data. This is the 12Z 500 millibar data. You can see a very strong wave here with strong flow rounding the base of that trough moving into the Midwest region here. Go for, going forward with time, you can see that that trough kind of closes off there. And by 19Z, we have a nice closed contour there from eastern South Dakota into Iowa. So a closed kind of circulation here at 500 millibars with extremely cold air aloft. You can see these red contours are minus 22 to minus 24 degrees Celsius air at the core of this trough. So very cold air overspreading the region of eastern Iowa. And that is a you know, classic feature of cold core events, this very cold air at the center of this trough helping to overspread, the, the, helping overspreading the region and helping to initiate instability growth uh, in this environment. We go down to 850 millibars here. And interesting, sometimes with these cold core events, we don't often see very strong uh, sort of uh, low-level jet or a strong low-level shear, but we were still holding on to a very strong low-level jet because of the mass response 
uh, in, as a result of this very strong low-level cyclone development here. Likely as this trough traverses the Rockies, surface low development occurs somewhere out in here, just on the lee or east side of the Rockies, moved off toward the east. And as a result, we had this very strong cyclone here at 850 millibars and at the surface. We'll take a look at the surface data again here in a second, but you can see very strong winds here. Uh, for cold core standards up into eastern Iowa, 40 to 35 to 40 knots here, just a, about a kilometer off the surface. So very strong low-level flow, helping to really transport that that you know somewhat modest low-level moisture, but enough low-level moisture for a cold core event into the region. Let's go down to the surface now. We'll take a look at our broad view first, and then we'll take a look again at some surface data. So we start off the day very strong surface low here up in the northeast Kansas to southeast Nebraska vicinity. Very strong pressure gradient there, so some strong winds in the low levels really helping to push that moisture northward into the region. But that low ejecting off toward the northeast with time, and then by about 19 to 20 Z, that low situated right over central Iowa with kind of a sort of cold front stretching back out here into the southern plains, perhaps a warm front kind of right out in this region here, perhaps a little bit of an inclusion process starting here with this surface low. And we talked about occlusion processes before. That's when the cold front overtakes the warm front, pushes all that warm air off the surface where you're just left with cooler air at the surface. So it looks like this particular mid-latitude cyclone or surface low starting to um, go over the hill, if you will, starting to decay a little bit as that occlusion process looks to be underway. But a very strong surface low nonetheless, 994 millibar low there, with setting the stage for a classic cold core event. We zoom in a little bit here. We'll go forward in time to our Midwest sector. This is at uh, 20Z, right about the time that the tornadoes were ongoing. We'll zoom back here to the 500 millibar map at 20Z as well. So our cold air aloft associated with that trough right in here, the center of the low right in there. And if we keep that in mind, our surface low situated right there as well. So a very close proximity between the 500 millibar cold pocket aloft and the surface low right there across east central Iowa. Classic, classic cold core case, and we've talked about this before. I actually have a, did a video on kind of a guide to cold core environments here. I'll put the link to that in the description as well, where I go over the classic cold core environments. And in that video, we talked about this uh, great work done by Geyer and Davies, 2004, on t classic uh, characteristics of cold core environments. And this is their kind of schematic diagram here, A and B. So on the right, we have a little bit of an, an occlusion going, kind of what we're dealing with here. A little bit of an occluded front here leading up to the surface low, that 500 millibar closed low, and the surface low within about 200 miles of each other. And we definitely check that box here. Cold front leading up into the surface low, kind of that moisture tongue leading up into the low as well. We definitely had that. If we look at our surface data, we go back to 12Z, and we'll start off here. You can see that surface low kind of in the Nebraska Iowa border vicinity traveling you know traversing off toward the east those dew points across the region early on 30s and 40s not really indicative of a classic sort of tornado setup but because of those really strong winds in the low levels that strengthening of that surface low as it ejected off toward the northeast we were able to get that moisture up into the region 52 dew point there at Ottumwa in southeast Iowa with some upper 40s there uh, amid upper mid to upper 50 surface temperatures, definitely enough for this cold core environment. So that little tongue of moisture leading up into the region here, and that's exactly what we get with these cold core events. Nice kind of low 50s dew points up, feeding into the surface low and kind of a tongue there. And you tend to get these you know, isolated supercells right at the interface of that cold front and that warm front just right ahead of the surface low right in there. And that's exactly what we had happen with this particular event. Another thing we notice, you don't have to have, again, those really you know, juicy sort of air masses in the low levels for these cold core setups. You can see the mixed layer cape here with these cold core setups, much less than a typical supercell tornado event. Uh, you know, upwards of 2,000 joules per kilogram is kind of the median value there for you know, your typical kind of tornado events, cold core events, much, much less, uh, only about 800, the median value there. So it doesn't take a lot. Uh, for these cold core events to uh, take shape. So very classic cold core event once again. Surface low, this is at 20Z. Surface low centered right in here. You can see the middle of the low right in there. Very strong flow around that. Very strong surface low flow out of the south, pumping that modest but adequate low level moisture in there with very strong surface heating. You can see on the satellite here. So we went into the morning hours. We had some rain and showers move through. You can see that those kind of that 
clouds right in there, indicative of some showers. We take a look at our kind of zoomed out radar view. Definitely some showers in, taking place there across eastern Iowa as that low uh, approached. And that is typical with these cold core events. Very strong surface low usually does have, and very strong trough aloft definitely usually kind of in, uh, initiates these showers out ahead. But what happens behind that is you get very uh, uh, stout clearing. You can see all the sunshine behind this as that dry slot, that kind of drier air uh, moves into the region, clears out all the cloud cover. And this is just a textbook, textbook surface low. Uh, and satellite picture for a cold core event. You see those thunderstorms start to fire up there in southeast Iowa as that sunshine takes place. And we've talked about this before. It doesn't take a lot of clearing, maybe just a couple hours of rapid clearing for rapid destabilization to take place. So those th thunderstorms right in the center of the low. You can see that low center right in there. Those thunderstorms right out ahead of the low, uh, right where our Davies and Geyer schematic kind of tells us where these thunderstorms should uh, take place. So that's kind of just, again, a classic sort of picture there uh, on satellite for this particular, for a cold core event. And we had a pretty uh, stout looking environment for cold core standards here. Again, instability was not forecast to be that strong. Those showers were expected to kind of hang around a little bit longer and that dry slot kind of lagged behind a little bit, but we did have those surface temperatures thanks to that. It was a few hours of sunshine there get into the upper 50s. This is at Ottumwa, Iowa, so Southeast Iowa. Uh, just to the south of this tornadic supercell, um, and um, this you know is just a classic profile. These low, very strong instability fe featured there, kind of in the low levels, zero to three kilometer cape, about a hundred joules per kilogram there. So very strong instability in the low levels, and a little bit stronger shear than what we usually see for a cold core event because that low level jet, just that western edge of the low level jet hanging around. Uh, in place, uh, helping to kind of enlarge these hodographs in the low levels. And when you have that very strong low level instability, that will very efficiently stretch any sort of spin, any sort of vorticity in the low levels into the vertical uh, with a strong, robust updraft. You know, you can see only about 500 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape here, but that is more than adequate for updrafts to sustain uh, in this kind of environment. So no doubt, strong low level instability helped to really stretch this low level shear into the vertical. And you can see as we look at our zero to three kilometer cape and surface vorticity map that as we go on with time, nice little bullseye develops right there in southeast Iowa and the storms formed right in that, kind of stayed with that nose of the uh, enhanced zero to three kilometer cape, very strong surface vorticity right out ahead on that warm front just ahead of the surface low. And we've talked about that before as well in a video on the tornado cheat code, this three cape and surface vorticity. The storms happen right on the nose of that three cape and surface vorticity bullseye. So pretty classic uh, for this, uh, for a cold core event. And this was some uh, radar imagery from our storm kind of zoomed in here. So you get kind of a couple supercells low back out in here somewhere, and you just kind of get this little arc of supercells out ahead of the low, right at that interface between the cold front and the warm front. And we had a very nice looking supercell take shape there near Williamsburg. You can see that rotation starts to take shape little bit of a strong couplet there just to the northeast of Williamsburg, likely producing the tornado there. So it moves off toward the, toward the northeast again. This is not a, a typical sort of picture you see on radar for a classic supercell, but these cold core supercells often don't take those those classic supercell shapes. They'll have just a little kind of bean-shaped storm with, with a, you know, a weak, maybe weak-looking couplet, but, you know, definitely a tornado vortex signature nonetheless. Was able to move off toward the northeast. Continued on to the northeast, produce some hail as well. So you can see the strong uh, reflectivity there in the core of the storm, those steep lapse rates aloft, and kind of modest instability in the mid-levels there helped to initiate some hail growth uh, with this storm as well, based just strictly on kind of the cold temperatures aloft uh, in this environment. Continues to go off toward the northeast, continues to kind of wrap up there briefly. I think there was another brief tornado here near Cedar Rapids. You can see that couplet kind of uh, get a little more stout there before it ran into a little bit less instability with eastern extent into eastern Iowa. And this is just a textbook sort of a classic look for a cold core event. This is our echo tops here on the right. So uh, the radar estimate of how tall the storms are. And you'll see these blues are about 25,000 feet. Greens are about 30,000 feet. You can see just widespread dark blues here. 
So very low top storms. We reached about 30,000 feet here as that storm was getting ready to produce the tornado near Williamsburg, but very low top storms. And that is a, a hallmark of these cold core events. The instability doesn't stretch you know, all the way up into the atmosphere very, very much. So these storms are very, very shallow. Only about 30,000 foot tops with these storms, but because the updrafts are so robust, strong low level, low level instability, it's going to stretch that low level shear very, very efficiently to create supercells, even though they're not maybe the tallest supercells we've ever seen. So that's going to do it. Very uh, interesting cold core event that, you know, even you know a lot of people got caught off guard with, um, you know, didn't think the dew points, didn't think the heating uh, was going to... Uh, um, take place in this region enough to really maximize these cold core parameters, but just shows it doesn't take much. You know, the uh, surface data here, 57 over 52 uh, at Atumwa. They're just south of where those tornadoes occurred, right on the warm front. Um, so, uh, you know, it doesn't take much in these cold core setups for a, a, a nice looking tornado, tornado to occur. And once again, these were a very photogenic tornado, as is the case often with these uh, cold core setups. Not really the hodograph that indicates that, but that little bit of backing in the, in the uh, mid-levels helps to vent that precipitation away from the mesocyclone region of the storm and helps to make a nice photogenic uh, tornado uh, out of these environments. So very interesting event, and that's going to wrap things up. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.